All right, uh, we, we got the shaft turned around and, uh, and we're going to do a lap fit on this end. So I'm going to show you the proper way um, to fit up a propeller, uh, or at least how it's done here. All right, <clears throat> we've got the shaft set up in the lathe here and we're going to prep this and we're going to do a lap fit on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and smooth out the edge of the keyway and give it a quick polish before it's ready to actually do our first fit up with the propeller. I had to get a free wheel in there. Okay. Now often people will look at a uh, stern bearing area, we got between here and there, uh, where the stern bearing actually supports the shaft. And uh, is, it, especially in a lot of fishermen, uh, we have cases where a line get wrapped in between the bearing and the shaft and causes it uh, uh, wear. Appearance, the bearing most of the time looks worse than it is. Okay, This is an inch and a half shaft. Right here, this little deep groove that we feel right here is measuring out 1487. So it's really only eight thousandths undersized there. But as soon as you travel on down here, we're averaging 400, 300, 200, 100, and then it jumps back up to about 500 at that point right there. This is this is acceptable. What I would consider not acceptable, anything that exceeds 2% of the diameter. That means 20 thousandths per inch in diameter. So if it was one inch, it'd be 20. This one right here is inch and a half, so we're talking 30 thousandths. So, you know, this one little groove, little area right here is less than halfway to what I would consider a considerable. Now, it's, it's only in that little tiny area there. We polish on over here, it's got a lot of life left. Okay, uh, we're just double checking everything on the propeller before um, we go ahead and start lapping it onto that shaft. Um, the first thing that's most important is that your key slips through the bore. Now I can feel a tight area down there. There's probably marine growth uh, right down in where you have a little bit of leftover uh, draw, but it slides pretty freely in here. Okay, but we'll flip it over. Well, you can see. See all these more, um, you know, people are real creative with their damage. All right, I'm gonna flip it over here, and that's we're real tight there. Now we can just go past that. We're all free right in there. Now, even though that might be in the draw area, we want to make sure that our key is 100% free through this this area right here. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do is get in here and uh, and file. The clearance in here. We want this key to slide freely on the propeller. You tap a key in the shaft, slide freely in the propeller. Now we're not trying to open it up excessively. All we want is a good sliding fit. This is a Nibral wheel. Nibrals are much tougher than a standard marine bronze prop. Okay, this is ideal. You want your key to slip freely there. It's not really, it's not really rattling around, but it is sliding real free. You want that. You want to make sure that when you're making, putting your propeller on, not to drop your key. Um, all right, we got that. Now we're going to go ahead because it's marine growth uh, in on the miner here. And this was the propeller that you can see it was making total contact in there and not in there. This is the mirror image. And get a. See if I can get a picture of that so I can 
give you a still shot of that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dress up the uh, the bore itself by letting your your paper come in and out of the bore. You you will give a a, a nice little roll over on the sharp edge and making sure that you're not having any ridge problems there. All right, and all we're doing is just trying to get it down to clean metal. Okay, Nibel's real tough. I mean, even a regular bronze probably be able to do. We got down here, all the marine growth is gone around the minor diameter, okay? This is ready to put on, and uh, in fact, I think I, I'm probably going to do a blue so you can actually see um, what the virgin hole against the virgin shaft, non-machined, or non-lapped. All right, yeah. not everybody has Prussian blue in their back pocket, okay? And if, when I get done with this, I'll show you another way of checking it. And uh, you can go down to any of your convenience stores and you can get a Sharpie pen and it'll do the same thing. Okay, just a couple little dabs here. It don't take a lot. Real thin layer. Alright. Alright. Nice clean props. That sound, just like a bell, is exactly the sound that you want to hear when you push that prop home after you have the key and everything else. If you don't hear that sound putting the prop in place, something is in between the bore of the propeller and the OD of the shaft and that will create a loose fit later on. You're not fitting tight to the, the taper. All right, all right. If you're gonna whack your propeller getting it off, I got my hand here. You might wanna put on a nut. Feel safe. Right here, base of the hub, safe place. You're not gonna distort, you're not gonna bend, you're not gonna repitch your prop. Alright, two places you're looking for contact, you're looking for it on the shaft and you're looking for it in the propeller. Okay, I'm, a, I'm looking at the shaft here because it shows more than what you got in there, but you, you do have, you have your extremely hard hit right up here at the very top and you, you have some areas down in here that aren't even being touched. All right, right in here we're seeing that we're hitting hard all the way around the top. That's what we saw in there before we did all the cleanup and, and uh, we saw it on the outside of the shaft. Now we saw a little contact area in here. Um, there, there is a couple spots in there and it does, not all the way around, but it does show us a couple contacts in here. So even just our cleanup on the bore and the shaft, we've already got a better fit than it had when it was removed. I'm going to give you a still shot of the bore so you can see the transfer that was done in there. Okay, now that we've prepped it for lapping, we're going to go ahead and lap it. Uh, and smear on. Of course, you already can see that uh, this is a little easier than doing it underneath the boat. Um, and also, too, the shaft gets to spin constantly, so you don't have to rotate your shaft periodically <clears throat> so that your, uh, your normal weight and lapping pressures are even all the way around your shaft. Okay? I don't know why I'm being so pretty. This shit just got to go on there, okay? Sometimes you'll have a high spot on your keys and it'll be real grabby. And you, at first you're gonna wanna ease in on, on your pressure there. And some people think that the, uh, 
the lapping process is going to just totally gut out the prop and and uh, spray it all the wear. You got to pull it off and you got to reapply because after a while it's crushing all the the lapping compound out. Scoop it out of the key, put it back on here. Scoop it out of the key of the of the prop here. Back it off a little bit once in a while, let some goop in there. It's not a muscle thing, you're letting the compound do the work. You want to be firm, but you don't you don't want to cram it on there. It will grab, it will take you for a ride. This pop ain't too big, but when they grab, they grab. That's what tapers are made to do, is hold the prop. Everything else on a shaft in key, nuts, cotter pin, those are all safety factors. Okay, the frosty uh, uh, wear areas are, uh, are where the, the grid is rolling around and uh, making contact. You have some hollows in here where you're not so great. We knew it was light on this end anyway. There is a couple spots down in here, but there was one point in that propeller that was stuck. And you can see, I think it was like right in this first area right here. Uh, so uh, one little contact here and then that forced this contact up here and that's how you got that hollow area all the way in there. So by cleaning everything up we realize now that besides this one piece right here she was pretty pretty close but she was light in here. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give her some more wraps there until we get what we feel is uh, good and then we're going to go ahead and blue check it to confirm our analysis. We've uh, we've been lapping for a little bit on here, and I feel it's uh, it's ready uh, for a, for a first check here, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the key in here. All right, nice and snug fit. You know that key's not gonna travel on you. Uh, I don't ramp my keys at all. I'm only making the key as long as a full fit, bottom of the depth before it breaks up. And, uh, and then straight on to the end here. All right, and here's a simple Sharpie test because you can get these anywhere. Not everybody has this dicum here. And uh, I go ahead, I like three lines, just a little way away from the key on the, uh, on the port side here. And uh, about the same distance on the starboard side of the key. And then, and put one on the bottom here. All right. At least that's the full contact there. And uh, when when the prop comes up onto it, we will uh, we'll see where we're hitting here. Make sure there's no particles in between everything. I've cleaned this off here just before I did that, and very carefully. Get your wheel up here. Okay. This way here, with the key guiding it, we know we're going to be going on our location. And it slides freely. You're not going to raise any brass or shear or scrape any brass off of that key that's going to get down inside that, around the bore. You get something down around the bore, and you're going to lose your fit. All right. Nice bell sound.